Hello everyone, good afternoon. Thank you for taking the time out to attend this talk with me. And I'm uh, very glad to be sharing this topic with you today. Today we will be talking a bit more about biohacking with tech for better health. And I will introduce to you what do we mean by biohacking. Uh, but first and foremost, I really want to let everybody know that today's talk is more about you than me. So in many other talks, right, usually the presenter will uh, be presenting the slides and uh, try to go through the content and making sure uh, everyone gets to download as much information as possible. But I think uh, for MLab, uh, one of our guiding principles for having talks, right, live talks especially, is for us to interact with the audience. I mean, that's why we have live talks, right? If, uh, if I'm not going to speak to you, if not going to ask questions, and uh, I then myself will do a recorded one. So please uh, feel free to type in your questions in a Q&A session, and uh, I will answer one or two questions along the way. And towards the end of the talk, we have a 10 minutes uh, duration where I will try to cover as many questions as possible. If I am unable to answer some of the questions uh, because I'm not a walking encyclopedia, but all due to the interest of time, uh, please uh, contact us and uh, if you are really interested to find out about the answers, yeah, I'll be more than happy to uh, try to uh, answer you as soon as possible. Okay, so uh, hopefully after today, you understand a bit more about your body, actually the workings of your body and you are able to find the solutions to uh, change or improve on the mechan uh, mechanics of the body. You will become like an engineer of your body today. Uh, not, not like a full-fledged one, but basic understanding, okay? And lastly, out of today's talk, I want to give you all three hacks uh, to make it more efficient for you to reach uh, better health sooner and also to give you a bit of inertia, right? To maybe even after today, you find a bit more motivation and you want to start to make small changes uh, to improve your health really. Okay, a bit about myself. I'm an exercise physiologist slash sports scientist. That's because of the duration of my career over the last uh, 12 years. Uh, I am very lucky to be able to uh, do two things. So exercise physiologists, basically we do preventive health, working with the general population, right? To use exercise, prescribe exercise like medicine, right? To reduce the risk of diabetes or manage diabetes, uh, like cardiovascular diseases. Like I have a patient now who just finished a uh, who just completed a quadruple bypass and uh, I'm bringing him back to cycling again. So now he's uh, from, I think five months ago, he just finished the surgery. Now, last week, he just did 110 km of cycle. So that's my job to, uh, to bring people back to doing what they like as an exercise physiologist. Sports scientist uh, is to make people jump higher, run faster. But usually I work with youth athletes because uh, I think they are the future and I want to prepare them right to be healthy adults. So I love to work with the youth athletes, uh, prevent them from getting injured while doing what they love. You know, sports, usually children, they do sports, right? It's for the interest to laugh, to socialize their friends. So I want to help them by preventing injury, by making them stronger through sports science. So yeah, making them stronger, they will be stay injury free and they can continue to do things. And uh, I, I graduated from... Uh, NIE, uh, I did my research there in exercise and sports studies, but I did my research in motor learning, how people learn to learn a certain skill, what happens in the body, how do you, what, what do you, what does your mind go through right, when you try to learn a new skill? Yeah, so that's uh, my research topic when I was doing my master's in NIE. And uh, I graduated from Edith Cohen in Australia, Perth. That was my bachelor. Yeah, so in a nutshell, this is me and I love. I mean, my core sport is football and I love to do endurance sports like cycling. Uh, this. I cycle about 200k a week. Yeah, sometimes social, sometimes a bit faster. Yeah, that's a nutshell about me. If you want to know more, you can just type the Q&A. So nice to meet everyone. And I want to speak a bit more about what do you mean by health? Uh, what, what do you understand? What do you understand about uh, the changes that you can make, right, to achieve optimal health? Uh, please share with me your thoughts also in, your, in the Q&A. Okay, and answer two. Could you try? Oh, okay. Yeah, so in sports science or in exercise and sports science, what we usually, 
want to target, right, to achieve optimal health for our clients would be to target good exercise, eating well, uh, sleeping well. That means your sleep duration is enough, but you are also having good sleep. That means the sleep quality is good. And of course, your mental well-being, how do you distress, you know, distressing is so important. So today's biohack, right, will cover three parts. One is a hack for exercise, a hack for sleeping, and a hack for mental well-being. As for the nutrition part, right, uh, I think in the interest of time, I don't want to overload everybody with too much information. Otherwise, uh, maybe I don't know what, what the ATL actually talk about. Yeah, so if you are really interested to know more, right, we in the, maybe in the second series of Biohack, we can also cover uh, on nutrition. Okay, so basically, right, to achieve optimal health, right, you think of this, right, as uh, the areas that you need to cover. Okay, it's not, not just exercise only. Actually, these other areas are very important. It's like your investment, right? You put some in blue chips, you put some in high risk uh, uh, shares, you put some in bonds, when low risk government bonds, some you put in the bank, you know, depends. So you diversify your uh, investment, then you get a uh, very good financial help, right? So optimal health also, you need to look at different areas. And sleep is one of the uh, areas that Singaporeans uh, do not do very well in. Uh. I mean, there are reports that Singaporeans don't get enough sleep really. Do you get at least seven to eight hours of sleep each day? As you, as you get older, sometimes it's harder to sleep. That's because the body changes, you know, your melatonin changes. I'll cover a bit more of that. Do you, do you all get seven to eight hours of sleep? I, 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 only when I'm on holiday, I get about eight to nine hours. Uh, usually I'll get five to six hours also. I'm uh, quite guilty of that too. Okay. So, what is biohacking? Okay, bio, who has, if you, is this term very new to everybody? So biohacking, right, it sounds like, wow, is it something bad or what? So if you Google for it, right, people will say, oh, you want to implant some microchip in your body or in the brain, you know, you want to change, make you become smarter instantaneously. But we are not, I'm not going to introduce any of that today. The biohacks, right, that we are going to introduce today, right, are lifestyle changes, right, that you can make to uh, change certain physiological parts of your body to go to progress to better health faster. So I'll give you some examples of that later on. Okay. And uh, biohacking, right, requires us to know a bit about science, about what happens in our body when we do certain things. Like when we do HIIT, what happens? Hey, if I do HIIT interval training, you know, and con compared to just cycling for very long distance, two different types of exercises. What happens inside my body when I do HIIT or when I do cycling for a very long time? Do we know what happened? Yeah, so I will explain a bit more, but I will not try to uh, make it like a science lecture. Otherwise, everybody will start logging off. Then I'll be talking to myself, <laughs> okay? So science can be a bit daunting because uh, I think usually, right, uh, we are very tired from work or even sometimes managing our family, right? And when we want to go and read about science, we need things up we are very stressed really. So science not so easy for people to uh, go and read more. Then second, right, people are a bit emotion. So when you when you see like uh, some certain fitness program, right, they suddenly show you people that are very strong or, or look good, then you, wow, it connect with you, then suddenly you take out. But even though it's not scientific, right, like five weeks, you will take, you you lose about five kg which is clinically quite borderline really. You cannot lose so much weight in five weeks. It's uh, quite stressful. But because you see, wow, emotionally you are attached, then you believe. Yeah, but so sometimes you need to take a step back, right? And be more logical about that. And people are skeptical because you, too much information around, you know what is real science and what is not. Sometimes even the real, sometimes scientists also might tell you like, the, the easiest one is the vaccine, right? So many information, what is real and what is not real. Yeah, it needs to be informed, studied. Lah. And whatever I'm going to share today to you, also please question and also please ask me, oh, is this, what, what other information are there? Okay, so the hacks, right, I want to really share with you is to help you to prolong your health span. Health span and lifespan is different. Lifespan, average lifespan for Singaporeans now, right, is about 85 years. So you live under 85 years. But, right, the number of years you spend in good health, right, is only about 75. The, the next the last few decades, right, either you, some of us have my difficulty walking or getting up or even do daily stuff like walking to the market, walking a bit faster or thinking properly. 
Yeah, so you want to use right, biohacks right, to extend your health span as close to your lifespan as possible. Okay, so uh, still no quick fix. Biohacks is not about quick fix. You still need to put in the effort to do it. But the solution right, is better okay, compared to traditional ones. You know, like last time people just do 1,000 push-ups, right? But actually, that's an easier way to get stronger. Don't you do 1,000 push-ups? Okay? Mm, it's like taking uh, uh, yeah, the shortest route, but it still must put in effort. Okay. So, uh, and along with certain lifestyle changes, right, there are also certain technology hardware, right, that you can purchase to assist you with those lifestyle changes, either to remind you or give you feedback, which is very important, okay? These are consumer wearables. Usually consumable wearables, right, for health tech, right, they cost between $300 to $500. Uh, it depends on your disposable income, but generally try not to go for things that are free or too cheap because if you're going to buy something, right, that measures your health uh, stats, right, it better be accurate and designed by proper engineer and uh, advised by exercise physiologists like us who have gone through uh, research and, you know, to make sure that the, whatever the thing is measuring right, is accurate and from the first time to the hundredth time you measure, right, it's repeatable. That means you can compare. Okay? So there are smart watches like Apple Watch, uh, Fitbit, uh, Garmin, okay? And uh, yeah, even there are some now, right, there are, there's a brand called Spear, S-P-I-R-E, something that it can be worn on the shirt. It can measure your heart rate, uh, your stress level, and it transmits directly to the doctor. Uh, I don't think it's available in Singapore, but you'll see more and more of this, right, that are uh, available in the future already. Uh, maybe Singapore will catch on soon. Of course, then also when the product is well designed, there's also the privacy matter. Like, you know, for example, like Apple, right? Uh, you know, the data are kept securely with Apple. Even Apple has trouble accessing your data because it's just encrypted. So always think about, okay, before I buy something wearable, right? When, I, when the thing records my health data, who actually has oversight of it? So this one you must know, okay? Read about the data privacy. There are sometimes things that are a bit expensive is because they don't need to sell your data to earn revenue. Yeah, so you need to know about this, huh? okay? It's very important, your the PDPA. Mm. Then, oh, even the Apple Watch now, it can measure ECG. So it measures whether your uh, the electrical activity of heart is normal or not. Uh, it gives you indication. Still must check in with your cardiologist. But at least there's good feedback. And the devices must be good enough so that it doesn't frighten you. Because if it's uh, always giving you uh, a false alarm, right, then it's quite stressful. Lah. Okay. So now, right, I'm going to introduce the first hack. Okay, which I mentioned, how to make you have better sleep quality. What can you do? Okay, so to have better sleep quality, right, you must try to increase your melatonin levels just before you sleep for, so that when you rest, right, you can go into better sleep quality. Okay, so now the question is, right, what is melatonin? Wow, it's such a big word, you know, but it's one of the hormones right in your body that can actually improve your sleep quality and how can we increase that okay rather than just uh, okay uh i make myself tired you know uh, or rather i just uh, try to make myself as comfortable as possible uh, uh try to get a regular sleep routine of course all this help but if you can you are able to make certain changes right physiologically right it's going to make it more efficient you're going to get those uh, better sleep even sooner. Okay, but we must always have this why. Why is good sleep so important? Of course, first, right, if you sleep well, it affects your heart and security system because during sleep, it allows the body is actually repairing itself. The heart doesn't, uh, the heart and the security system, right, don't get stressed, right, uh, during exercise especially right if you have good sleep so for example there's a study uh if you don't have enough rest okay and you go and exercise hit or you exercise something that is uh quite strenuous right markers right that means there's chemical markers right where uh 
the doctors actually they extract right chemical markers of heart damage is much higher. So if you don't sleep well and you go and exercise, right, you are actually increasing the risk right, of heart damages. Okay, then hormones and sleep also. So uh, especially for children, if the youth right, sleep well and they have adequate sleep, their puberty, they'll have, uh, the body will secrete enough good hormone, right? So that during puberty, they are able to grow well. Okay. And okay, metabolism, you know, if you don't have enough sleep, also your appetite will be affected. So you'll feel hungry easier and you'll feel less full. The hormones that are controlling your appetite, right, will get affected. And then also affect your immune system. Your immune system drops. And during the night, right, when you sleep well, the body actually right, revises what it learns during the day and inadequate sleep also affects your alertness and your ability to think properly. That's why sometimes you sleep maybe three, four hours, you wake up, okay, your body don't feel so sore anymore, but then you feel very groggy, you cannot drive properly, you have, con you have uh, issues, right, trying to uh, concentrate, yeah, so it affects, okay, so sleep is very important not only uh, affects thinking, it increases your risk of cardiovascular diseases also. So now we understand sleep is very important. So how can we improve the quality of sleep? By increasing the level of melatonin just before we go to bed. Okay, so what is melatonin actually? Okay, melatonin uh, is often, with, just think of it, it's, a, it's called a sleep hormone. Okay, it's secreted right by the body, right? When the body comes into, uh, when, there's dark, when the light starts to dim, okay, the body will secrete this and it's our it's nature way of telling, oh, it's time to go to rest, you know, for the body to start repairing itself, for the, for the body to repair the mind, to revise uh, what is it. It's naturally secreted, okay, it's accelerated, right, uh, by certain lifestyle changes, right, that you make, okay, and especially in Singapore, there's a lot of light pollution, so uh, sometimes, right, even when it's uh, like if you look at our street lamp, our streets are so brightly lit. It's very hard for the body, right, to actually tell the uh, to tell itself that it's time to uh, rest. It's night time. Uh, we we are going to release this melatonin, the sleep hormone, so that we can start to feel sleepy. Especially imagine you go to the shopping malls. Yeah, it's got all white lights. Okay. So how can we increase this? By making sure, right, that every time that we, uh, that evening approach, right, we are exposed to dim lights. Okay. So, okay, this is very common. Uh, if you look at the HDB blocks at night, you can see, right, who is having the right kind of lighting to uh, prepare yourself for better sleep. Okay. Which is your house at night? Okay, after 6 p.m. when, okay, sorry, after 7 p.m., about this is where sunsets usually in Singapore because we are, we are all season, we do have like winter sets at 5, right? Singapore is always summer, so usually quite late. Lah. Maybe in December sets a bit earlier, 6.45, 6.30. Yeah, which of it, A or B? <laughs> okay, if your, if your, uh, if your house, right, is, a, right, that means uh, during evening, right, that means it's a bit too bright D, okay? And uh, it should be like D, uh, like this kind of warm light and dim light. And I'm going to share a bit more with you, right, uh, what kind, how bright it is, because it's very subjective, right? If you look at the picture, you say, oh, it's quite dim, but how deep it is dim, okay? And... And people, right, who are exposed, right, to brighter evening lights, uh, the studies have shown, right, they reported, right, poorer sleep, harder to fall asleep, okay? Harder to fall asleep, uh, easier to wake up, and uh, poorer sleep quality, they wake up in the middle of the night, self-reported one. Okay, so, first, how do you make sure, right, that when you come to evening, right, when you enter the house, right, of course, you can just change the lighting in your house, but sometimes you really need daylight. Like, you need white light because like in the afternoon when you work, some of us might not have the best uh, sunlight. You need to have light, daylight because it tells the body, hey, it's daylight, we need to be alert. But when night comes, okay, you can actually use technology like Philip Hughes. 
uh, you can actually set, right, okay, at 6 p.m. when I come home at night, you can set, okay, I want the lighting, right, to be conducive so that I will be able to sleep better. Yes, they have such function. So control lighting automatically. You don't need to go and think about it. Like my house, I don't have this now. It's because you need to have a smart home and then uh, you can change. Yeah, so you say, okay, I can just switch on the light by myself and on. But like I say, right, tech is supposed to assist you to make life easier. So this is just set it automatically. When you come at night, automatically it's this. In the daytime, you just change the white light. Okay, and now that smart home is, uh, it has been around for the last six years, seven years. Good thing is when technology matures, right, it's usually cheaper. Yeah. So, Philip Hue, you can adjust what kind of lighting you want to help you to get into a better lighting condition to prepare yourself for sleep. And if you don't know, right, actually when you go to find the Philip, go to the Philip shop, right, they, you can get somebody right, who is specialized in smart home to help you. Mm. Okay, how bright is bright? Uh? Okay, it should be less than 100 lux UXE for, to consider dim. That is the studies shown, right, for optimal lighting during evening. Less than 100 lux. Anything more than that, right, it's a bit not so optimal uh, for, for conducive environment. Okay, so you want to make automated, you also need a few devices. Okay, either Amazon Echo, a Google Home, or an Apple HomePod. Okay, because this one, these devices are like the bridge between your mobile devices and the lights. It acts as a, a middleman. So if you want things to be automated, right, then you need to have this. Okay, but if the one you want to switch on automatically from your phone, right, then it's fine. You don't need to have these kind of devices. Okay. Okay, before I go to the next hack, let me... Uh, yeah, so one wow, of the regular exercise, eat more vegetables. Yeah, correct. Yeah, regular exercise, that means to consistently take it as part of your lifestyle. Mm. Yep. Uh, Lina, there's so many info, how to filter. Okay, so, so many info out there, right? Try to uh, look for government websites, okay? Or, or university websites, academic websites, okay? Websites, right, that are not selling things and then they create studies, right, to support that their, their products work. Okay. So government websites, academic websites are usually the go-to. Like men's health, you know, magazines, all this. Sometimes it's just editors that they are passionate about fitness. They don't study into science. Imagine, right, the body is such an amazing work of art and the mechanics so much, right? How can you just attend how can you just read and you don't need to study? Even doctors, they need to study like so many years, right, to understand it. So if somebody, right, suddenly they just read books and say, oh, I'm passionate about health and I start writing. Yeah, usually it's like that. Yeah, then it's a bit tricky and especially if they don't reference any uh, university journal, uh, scientific journals, then it's a bit, uh, yeah, uh, you have to do your informed decision. Uh. So government websites, academic sources, uh, yeah, they are the go-to. Men's health and some certain health magazines, right? Just uh, be careful uh, about what you read. Okay, uh, answer one, two more questions. Yeah, so if you don't feel that you are rested, even you sleep for eight to nine hours, right? Uh, it could be the sleep quality during that time, right? You don't go into deep sleep, okay? Yeah, you might be always like, uh, always in REM. Yeah, this one, you might, you can use certain uh, devices to track, to see if you don't have any sleeping disorder. You can use uh, certain health tech, right? Aura ring, O-U-R-A, you wear it on your finger, it can help to track your sleep quality. And then, right, if need to, you can approach an exercise physiologist or sleep doctor, right, to find out how you can be more well-rested. Mm. Like making the room colder, 18 degrees Celsius, uh, making sure that the room is dark, okay? Uh, your melatonin level might not be high enough. So after today, try to make sure they're exposed to more dim light five to six hours before your bedtime and regular bedtime. Try out a few, one or two of these solutions right, and see how it improves your sleep quality. And I will answer one more question. Oh yeah, insomnia is a, yeah, it's, wow, it's a very tricky thing. You should seek medical help for it if possible. Uh. 
yeah, it's, it's uh, tricky. Not easy, uh, insomnia. Sometimes uh, even shift workers, they do a lot because they are always changing their shift work. The body cannot get used to a regular circadian rhythm. Mm. Okay, let's go on to the next uh, hack. Okay, number two. To make us uh, be even more alert, right? When we are young. Uh, sorry, not young, sorry. When we are old, okay? Increase gray matter for better cognitive function. Gray matter is the outer layer of the brain. It's where uh, it has a lot of the neuron, the, the, the thinking part of the brain, okay? Where most of the connections are, where it's, when, it's, when you're thinking, it's the most active one, okay? So how to increase that portion? Because as you age, right, the gray matter, there's gray and white matter. The gray matter is very important. As you age, the thing will start to uh, atrophy. This natural aging process, okay? But dementia and all this is not, it's a disease, uh, it's not naturally, like when you get old, naturally get dementia. No, uh, you can prevent it one. You can mitigate this. And if you're gray matter, you can mitigate the loss. Even when you're older, you can still be very alert. You can still talk, you can communicate, which is very important, right? You want to talk to your grandchildren. You want to be able to read books. You want to be able to find your way around, you know? Yeah. Like recently, one of my uh, clients or so start to have degeneration already, uh, early stage of Alzheimer. Hey, early stage of Alzheimer or dementia. Drive halfway, six, 70 years old. Drive halfway, stop in the middle of the road. Don't know where he's going. Quite sad, lah. Yeah, but preventable. Lah. So what is the hack to increase gray matter? Okay, so again, we must answer the question of why is it so important, right? You must be able to learn Ability to learn experience, new experiences, you know, you want to go overseas, maybe there's a pottery class. Wow, you want to try, okay, you are able to, even at 80, you are able to, wow, I can still go and shake the clay and all this, solve problems. Yeah, you don't want to be too reliant on people, right? Because sometimes you're alone, you need to solve problems. You'll be able to find directions to the uh, next destination by Google Map. Mm. Remember where you keep your keys? So something so simple, right? Maybe in the audience, right, we think, ah, this one now, what's so simple, but hey, when the gray matters atrophy, then atrophy means decrease in math, ah. it's a term, scientific term for it, uh, you cannot even remember where you put your keys, and when you want to go out, you spend half an hour looking for it, and, it's, uh, and every time it happens, it's really very disruptive to life one, okay, so, to be able to do all this, uh, is really key, right, to successful health and aging, you know, yeah, the, like in MLAB, right, MLAB is AMP, why is it AMP? Uh? A is for attitude. So you must have a good attitude about life. Then you start to, you, I mean, even financially, you think properly, you are on the same. You know? So good attitude about health, you want to have the discipline in the nation, right? Then next one is mind. So mind is very important. Then next one is physical. So mind is always uh, most important first. Yeah. Okay, how to increase gray matter? What is the gray matter? Okay. So gray matters, right? Like I say, right? So the outer layer of it, right? The nervous system is made of gray matter and the white matter. However, right? The gray matter, right? Uh, allows us, right? To function normally. Okay? It is the part where we, where it helps us to think, to process information. Okay? And uh, we can also control movement. Gray matter help us to control movement, remember, remember things, and also very important, emotions. Sometimes you see people who have uh, issues, right? Uh, dementia, they don't have emotions. It's very hard for them to experience uh, happiness, sadness, which is also or, or, or one or another, they always feel sad. Yeah. So how can we reduce the loss of the gray matter? Actually, right, it's not difficult, but still, like I said at the beginning, you need to have the motivation to do it, the discipline to do it. Okay, that is by learning something new or medi uh, meditation. So let me ask you all, when was the last time you learned something new? Learn something new can be playing new games, uh, which I'm going to share with you what can we do okay, with certain texts. Yeah, when was the last time you learned something new? And sometimes in the rush of life, you get caught up doing certain things, right? Because maybe you need to provide for our family and we forgot to say, hey, let, let me use our skill future. Uh, go and learn how to bake a bread, how to uh, brew coffee. Okay, it stimulates the mind and it helps to mitigate the loss of gray matter when we age. So ask yourself, when was the last time you learned something new? Hey, it can be as simple as learning a new game, you know, like, okay, maybe I'm going to pick up golf. 
or maybe I learned how to throw a frisbee, something downstairs, uh, yeah, or talk to a new person, have a new conversation. Okay, so first thing, right, meditation. Meditation, right, has been shown, right, that it may help to reduce the loss of gray matter. The tricky part is, right, some of the studies, right, it's just like they find people who meditate a lot and they find people who don't meditate. And at that point of time, right, you just say, okay, hey, the people who meditate a lot, right, yeah, their gray matter, right, seems to be less atrophied than people who don't meditate. But it's at that point of time. They cannot say for sure because they never tracked this person for the last 20 to 30 years. They just say at that point of time. So they say it could be correlated. But why not, right? Because there are still many studies, right, that have shown meditation is good to maintain the mass of the gray matter. Okay? And uh, of course, the meditation, right? You, what can you do? Meditation, either if you can, you can sit down. Uh, but how do you meditate? You need somebody to guide you, right? Either you can find a coach, right? But now with technology like this, it's called Muse, M-U-S-E. It's very interesting, okay? You, it's about 200 plus US dollars with subscription to the app. So when you wear it on the head, it tracks your brainwave. Back then, I was trying to do something with the brainwave. Uh, it's quite accurate. They say it's as accurate as some clinical devices that measure brain waves. Okay. So uh, when you are meditating, the brain is, uh, you are calmer. The electrical activity of the brain is slightly different, right? So it's able, the software is able to detect that. And when you are meditating well, it will play music, right? Of the wind blowing, very gentle, you know. But suddenly when you are disrupted, then suddenly you, maybe you got uh, wind like gusting. Then you start to try to refine your focus. So, like I said at the beginning, tech is a way to give you feedback whether you're doing something correctly or not. And uh, it helps to guide you with tech. And this is designed by uh, engineers that are, they are, well, uh, they are good and uh, backed up by clinical studies also. They did try to use this right, to compare with clinical uh, EEG. Uh, EEG is, uh, is something described the brain wave. Yeah, EEG devices. So they are saying it's comparable. Okay, M U S E. Uh, there are two types. The basic one just measure brainwave. The more advanced one, which is more expensive, it measures uh, brainwave and sleep. Okay, next one, right? You if that is too expensive, you can use this uh simple hack. It's called a Google Box, but they don't sell anymore. But you can still find on Carousel, right? There are a few uh VR devices. Why? Because right. Have you heard of forest bathing? So you want when you meditate, right? You also want to be in a surrounding. That is a green or a place that gives you calmness. So you can enter this world right through virtual reality. Okay, this box may be about $10 to $20. Uh. You can bargain a bit on carousel, uh, but don't know about the person. Okay, all you need is your phone. You can see, right? You can slot it in in front. Okay, uh, let me try to draw it uh, so you all can see. Give me a moment. Yeah. This is your phone. Uh. Yeah. Okay, you can just slot it in front and your phone, right? will be playing the photos, which will be converted to a virtual reality by these two lens in front. Yeah, it's a very cheap way. And then you can wear your AirPods, right? And you will play calming sound. And then you can start to meditate, really. Okay, pretty, uh, this, is a, this is a more economical option. Mm, I did have one of these Google Box. It's quite sturdy, but they stopped producing this Google Box already. Okay, I'll uh, give it a try. Uh, but your phone, I think it needs to have certain uh, hardware capacity. Not all phones are okay, but most of our phones right now, right? If your phone is not, uh, I mean, last time when I used iPhone 8, right? It's still possible. I did it with iPhone 8. So yeah, not bad. And the last one, right? Games, right? This, uh, we, we use this place port with our elderly patients in our clinic. So you can see our, uh, Play games, so stimulate them. Uh, they actually improve right in their coordination and reaction after we do this. So you can see. So use legs, right? Hands, right? Yeah, something that's due. Yeah. So try to find the red color one. Uh, yeah. Then change the positioning of it. Yeah, always create new stimulus. Okay, this place port, uh, there are cheaper alternative, but it's also, I would say one of it is $40. They come in a pack and you have a software you can adjust the lights or the kind of games you want to play. You can use it on the children. I'm not selling. Uh, 
I'm just sharing with you uh, what are the devices that we use, right? What are the technology that we use to stimulate the mind, right? So to increase, uh, the, mitigate the loss of gray metals. Okay. And of course, right, other than meditation, right, you must also have, like I say, it's all aspects, right? You must have uh, eating well, don't smoke and all this. Not just meditate and you go and smoke all you want or meditate and smoke at the same time. It's going to off cancel off each other. Okay, please don't do that. Okay, before I go to the last hack, let me answer some questions. Uh, light exercises sufficient? Oh, light exercises, right? Uh, not sufficient uh, because... So one person asked the question is, are uh, light exercises sufficient to maintain good health without doing 30 minutes MDPA? MDPA, moderate intensity uh, physical activity. Okay? Depending on your baseline, if you are somebody right, that's recovering from uh, stroke, then of course, some light exercises is good to get you to walking. But ultimately, right, it's like studying. If you need to study uh, hard enough so that you can be smarter and go to the next level of uh, academic uh, like to the next academic level, the body also you need to have certain stress. So like walking, uh, might not be enough, right? To stress the heart because the heart is a muscle, so it's the cardiac muscle. You need to make it pump. You need to breathe so that you can your your diaphragm can get stronger to take in more air. So all these right, you need to be moderate intensity. So you must be able to jog, and then you can still say like three or four words. Where are you? Are we finishing soon? Okay, you cannot sing and have a full conversation while doing exercise. The intensity is definitely not enough. It's just maybe a recovery. Yeah. Remember, intensity is very important in exercise. Yeah, some, sometimes people don't understand. Yeah, but if you have uh, concerns about taking on moderate intensity, yeah, find an exercise physiologist or somebody who has an exercise and sports science degree, right, to coach you with it. Okay, how to bring you up from light intensity to moderate intensity. Like even a physiotherapist, some of the physiotherapists can be able to do it. Uh, two more questions. Uh, what about the step tracker, right? HPB. I think, right, the step tracker, right, like I said, right, uh, I'm not sure. Okay, so there are a few questions about the step tracker. So who designed it? Yeah, right. What is the quality of the hardware? Right. And yeah, so to me, right, I don't feel comfortable using it for sure. Okay, so like there are studies comparing the step tracker also. So the heart rate, right, is not reliable. Sometimes you are already panting very hard. Heart rate still shows like uh, light. So is it good? I mean, yeah, tracking steps is quite simple. La. But tracking steps also is the device that you use to track steps must make sure that it only tracks steps when you are walking. Last time when uh, there's a certain campaign, right, where you can uh, clock 10,000 steps and you can change your voucher, right? People put it on the dog, put it on the fan or just shake the hand like that to hack it. This is the real hack, you know, to clock the steps. But for Apple devices, like last time I used to work in Apple, right, you cannot, you shake, it doesn't work because the algorithm is so powerful that you understand you are just shaking the phone. It's not a walking motion. So is it good? Yeah, I leave that, uh, leave that uh, thought to you. Lah. Yeah, I, I would definitely be a bit apprehensive on it. Mm. Why am I not sleeping? Because sleeping pills has side effect. Your body will, it's not produced naturally. You will depend on it, right, to uh, fall asleep. And also, uh, once you get used to it, right, then you might to get a heavier dosage. So, yeah, anything that you can stay off medicine to stay off, uh, go for natural remedies first. Okay, not the same medicine is definitely out of the picture. Uh, try to change lifestyle first. And if it's really, really difficult, then it takes sleeping pills to get one or two good nights of sleep like, because it's going to affect your next day. So no choice. Mm. Okay, the last hack. Uh. Okay, so this is about exercise. Increasing mitochondrial content for greater fats metabol uh, metabolism. So what is... Uh, Mitochondria, okay, it's quite interesting to, this is quite a big word. Like. Mitochondria right, are little uh, organelles inside the muscle cells that actually they are the powerhouse. They, they produce energy and they are important, right, to assist in converting fats to energy. 
So if you have more mitochondria, right, your body is more uh, inclined towards converting fats to energy, and which is good because if you have uh, if you are excessive fats, if your body fat percentage is too high, your risk of heart diseases, diabetes, right, is going to be high. Okay. So uh, there's one study: the mitochondria level, right, increased by twenty five percent after six to seven sessions of HIIT only. So one of the hacks, right, is HIIT, which I'm going to introduce to you today. So what is HIIT? Uh, how how much? What is the what exercise duration? How long should I rest? Which I'm going to share with you later on. Okay. So mitochondria powerhouse. It is the switch, right, to making the body, right use fats as energy, okay, to put it simply. Okay, so why is uh, fat metabolizing improved body composition, like I said? Also, fats has a huge reserve of energy. You will improve your aerobic fitness, in other words, your stamina. So you can go for long duration, you can run for long duration without uh, feeling tired. And lastly, reduce the risk of cardiovascular diseases. Yeah. It's uh, quite a big no-no, the -no risk of cardiovascular disease. Especially nowadays, right? we sit more, we don't move about so much already. So our risk is actually going up. So, so right, we can see in the picture, the, mito, the mitochondria right, are here. You can see the round thing over there, right? Yeah, I didn't want to have a big, I think it's not necessary, but just for your information, it's this one. Small little pill-sized uh, shape uh, organelles. These are mitochondria. Okay? They break down the fat molecules okay, and then they produce the energy needed for the body. So since fats has a lot of energy, right? Yeah, it's almost limitless. Like. It's very hard to finish up. But sugar, carbohydrates, stored in the muscles and livers, right? it's easier to use up. So if you have more of this, that means you have more energy to use. Right. So how do we increase it? Okay. So one of the, the way to increase it, right? Wait, uh, okay. I think I need to remove the circle. <laughs> okay. One of the ways to increase it, right? Is to do HIIT, which is high intensity intermittent training. So when was the last time you exercised till you can hardly speak? People just say, wow, high intensity training, right? Wow. Maybe the risk of injury is higher. Uh, that depends. Uh, if you're strong enough, and you have a good training history, then you should go for high intensity training. And if you choose the right exercises, some of the CrossFit or the, sometimes you see like people in the F45, they do all this very complex movement, right? The more complex it is, when you are tired, it's even more dangerous. Yeah, because too, too difficult to do it. And when you are tired, right, actually do it wrongly, right? Okay, so when was the last time? Actually, high intensity training right, is very effective. If you have the fitness to do it, and if there's somebody, right, that can guide you to do it properly, which is usually a, health professional like uh, me or uh, somebody, right, who is being trained to do it properly. Okay, so what kind of technology, right, can you use, right, to monitor your intensity? Because I say intensity is everything. So first, your variables. You want to know that you're working at the right intensity, right? You Because people often, they mistake high intensity, moderate intensity for high intensity. So high intensity, uh, it will be at 95% of your maximum heart rate. So if your maximum heart rate, right, is, uh, let's say it's, if it's 200, okay, it's going to be 180 beats per minute and above, right, for doing the exercise duration, you know. So one of the, so one of the program, right, that people actually do, right, for HIT is on a bicycle. It's very it's simple. HIT must be done using very simple exercises because once intensity go up, when you are tired, your movement should be simple so that you can do it safely. Anything that, wow, lift the weights here and there, jump up and down when you're tired is a big no-no. It's just a lot of hype. Okay? I, for me, safety is always number one. You go to any gym, right? They always talk about, oh, very nice body. Wow, look at our exercise, so strong. You know? But they never talk about safety records. Why? It's very interesting, right? So, there's a study, six weeks of HIIT, three times a week only, compared to sometimes you do, uh, like running, or you do like five or six times, right? You just do three times of HIIT, right? Really, you can have good effects already. So it's actually four minutes of uh, cycle, okay? Continual cycle, uh, 
four minutes at 95% of maximum heart rate. So if your maximum heart rate is 200, right, you cycle at 180 and above, four minutes hard, and then two minutes, you take a break. So this is one set. The person did 10 sets of it, finish it in an hour, okay? After six weeks, right, when the person is doing at 60% maximum heart rate exercise, right, the scientists found out that the body actually in, improved in utilizing fats for energy. It's just after six weeks. So that means right, the person suddenly become more efficient using fats, improve body composition, easier to maintain a healthier weight. Yeah. Okay. So use the heart rate to track heart rate monitor, a proper one, okay, to track your intensity and then add right to actually uh, make sure that you're doing it correctly. Okay, you can set, you find out your maximum heart rate, set it, and in the app, right, it'll show you how many minutes are you doing it uh, at high intensity, how many minutes, and real-time feedback from watch. As you cycle, you can watch already. Oh, it's below 180, let me push a bit more. Okay, of course, 10 sets, uh, not everybody can do it. You have to find your sweet spot, okay? But of course, some of you all maybe think, oh, I can try and try Okay, but this is just one of the studies that is being shown. So that's one of the hacks to increase mitochondria levels so that you can your body can utilize fats more efficiently. And uh, so people always say like slow walking all this, you'll burn more fats and all this, right? Actually, yeah, see, there are certain beef one. You take one hour, right, of slow walking. Maybe, yes, the body will use fats as the main source, but since it's slow, right, you're doing very little work, right? How much energy you are actually expending, right? Correct or not? So actually, you're not utilizing a lot of energy and thus not expanding a lot of fats. So this one of my client who has done HIT right, uh, for the last six months, we can see the one circle, right, percentage body fat from 23.7% uh, dropped to 14.7. You know, 14.7 is very good for people who exercise regularly. 23.7 is like normal, uh, slightly higher than normal meal meal body fat percentage recommendation. Yeah, so you can see HIT, right? you just do HIT only. Yeah, but he can do it because last time it's a competitive uh, Wusu, uh, how do I call it? Wusu athlete, la. yeah. So this is him. But, but he's very disciplined. This person is super disciplined. He's uh, like a role model, more disciplined than me. Okay, so I've shared three hacks with you all. Uh, I'm going to answer three more questions. Uh, apologies if I cannot finish everyone's question. Uh, uh, okay, the intermittent fasting or keto diet, right? Uh, that one I need to go and find out, but I ever hear of anything that intermittent fasting and keto diet will help with melatonin. Yeah, not at this time. Red lighting, uh, uh, it must be dim, la, yeah. And how red is red? Uh, it, if the light must be dim enough, you can use a light meter that you can download light meter app to download on your phone and you can just hold it with a diffuser. Diffuser is just a piece of A4 size paper, right? They will put over the front camera and then it's a, it's, it's a light meter already. You measure, try to go below 100 lux. Okay, but red lighting a bit scary. Uh. I wouldn't use red lighting. Uh. <laughs> maybe I, if I use red lighting, right, maybe I'd be scared to, uh, like, I might, I'd be a bit anxious to sleep. Cortisol, does, do cortisol reduce production of melatonin? Hmm. Odilia, can you uh yeah, can you uh send me if you are interested to know the answer to this question, could you email me? Yeah, later we'll share our contact with you. Yeah, this one I'm not sure at this point of time. Mm. Isn't LED lights not good for health? Uh I mean if it's if there is white LED lights, right? You know all cars all white LED on the streets is like blinding, right? Yeah, definitely it's not so good before sleep. Uh mm. okay. Uh, contrary to what is said about not watching, I actually sleep better. Yeah, so to each his own, right? Yeah, me also. When I after I watch YouTube, I can sleep well. But whatever advice, right, that we have given today are people who have trouble sleeping. Yeah, they should try. So if people have trouble having a good rest, right, yeah, they watch movie, it will make it even worse. <laughs> yeah. So so certain things, certain interventions are for certain people. Hmm. Maybe your melatonin level is super high, really. Just uh, yeah. I drink coffee, I also get sleep. What are the pros and cons in taking melatonin? Oh, uh, you have to make sure that your body. I read somewhere before. You have to make sure your body right is uh reacts to the supplement 
well. And again, right, if it's something that is artificially uh, inflated, right, then the body might be dependent on the supplement. So one day, if you don't take the supplement, do can your body produce the melatonin uh, levels naturally, right? But if you need to take it uh, to help you rest better, then you have to seek a doctor's uh, advice to do it, a dietitian advice to do it, like, just to make sure that uh, you don't have any contraindication to taking this melatonin supplement. Mm. And for light meter apps, do you have, oh, uh, wow, I don't use an Android. Like. Mm. But you go to Google Play Store, that should, just use a free one. Yeah, it's quite accurate. Because nowadays, the better phones, right, they actually need to meter the light to take better photos. So it's quite accurate one. Yeah, any one that is free and has good reviews, I would think is okay. Yeah, usually the top few choices. Mm. I understand sleeping before midnight is good for our health because of the safety Yeah, but okay. Okay, the question is, I, I understand sleeping before midnight is good for our health cause of circadian rhythm but if we always have sufficient sleep though used to sleeping at 1 or 2 a.m by 78 hours of sleep is it still healthy uh so like i say right the body will want to produce melatonin right when it's stuck to get into that sleep cycle so if you sleep at 1 or 2 a.m by the time the sun is up right the body is secreting serotonin right to get you up but you're forcing it to sleep so you are going against uh, what is being natural. Like, unless your curtains are heavy, it just is in darkness. And then you have an app, right? Like the Philip Hue that have natural lighting to wake you up naturally. Uh, that's okay. Okay. And your sleep cycle, right? is generally con very constant. Like what I said, that is fine. But if you, if the bright light interrupts your sleep, then it's not too good. Okay. So be mindful of that. Oh, I only know the home pods. Home pods should cost between 300 plus. Google Home is cheaper. I think below 200 you can get ready. Amazon Echo, oh, I'm not too sure. Yeah, but to put it simply, right, the average cost right, shouldn't go above $400. Uh, even if, if you, I would say right, for health devices like this, consumer health devices, right, get one on carousel, secondhand one to try first. Because sometimes people might not know if they need or not. So it's better to try. Uh, get a cheaper one, try it out. And if it's like home pot, right? I have a home pot at home. So in the past, right, like I wouldn't know. Now I cannot live without it because I will ask it to set timer while I'll cook. Uh, set three minutes, the thing will okay. Set alarm. I will just shout instructions at it. Yeah, turn on the light or yeah, it's so convenient. It makes me lazy, right? So now I know I need it. But people have home pot, they never touch it. They, they sew it away. This is a second hand one, they sew it to me. So get a cheaper one to try out first. That's my advice. Uh. Mm. HPB. Okay, last, last uh, question. Uh. Uh, yes, a power nap is important because people, right, sometimes we really don't have the luxury of 78 hours sleep in this uh, time and age. So if you want to take a power nap, 20 minutes. Okay, nothing more than that. If you go 20 minutes, you go into the sleep inertia will be too great. You just go into deep sleep and you wake up even more tired. So 20 minutes are usually power nap, 20 to 30 minutes. And it will do wonder. It is not, power nap is not used to uh, reduce the sleep depth, but yes, it reduces a bit, but it will help you to be a bit more alert, okay? If you are in adequate sleep. And don't sleep like one or two hours just because the next day you don't have enough sleep. Try to wait until rest time and sleep a complete uh, rest like eight to nine hours so that the body can go through its natural cycle of repairing the body and mind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, apologies because in the intro of time, I'm not able to finish the rest of the questions. If you really have, uh, if you really want to know the answers, right, please contact to your questions that I didn't answer. Please contact uh, MLab uh, where we like, explain, we are actually we are a physiotherapy clinic, uh, me, exercise and sports scientists in it because we are for preventive health, right? Uh, to prescribe exercise like medicine. Uh, yeah, a bit like people call me a personal trainer. Yeah, maybe I just study a bit more uh, about eight years of in the university about human body. So that's me. Yeah, so contact MLab with your questions, info at mlab.sg. You can scan the QR code here to follow us on Facebook, 
uh, or to go to our website and then from there, right, you can just shoot the questions at me and I will answer them as soon as possible. A bit of delay, please uh, be patient. I will uh, get to them very soon. And if you, yeah. So uh, thank you very much for attention. Uh, also, please give us your feedback about this session. I'm uh, very happy, right, to be able to share all this information with you, you know, especially because uh, preventive health is one of my uh, vision, you know, to get people to be healthier using exercise as a natural remedy. Uh, and we are setting up an exercise and sports science society with National University Hospital System uh, in this year. So to uh, share, right, scientific evidence right, on exercise. Yeah, not just uh, for hype, you know, because there are still too much hype already. Yeah, like six packs is not a natural body. Yeah, it's like like us, right? Like you and me, we are natural. So everybody should be gunning for this, not like six packs. It's just all this uh, misconception. You are trying to use science, right? To uh, share with you or educate you a bit more. So thank you very much for tuning in.